What attracted you to the project? Originally, um, the producer, Martin Bregman, because of his track record and because of his um, his choice in films. He's done some wonderful, you know, marvelous movies. You know him. A lot of Pacino films. Uh, and I really wanted to work with him. Um, and when he sent me this this piece, I read it and I just viewed it as a small, simple, honest human story. And I just thought, well, it's quiet. It was a quiet movie to me. I know this is funny because it turned into a female action movie, bank robber. Okay, I know I was playing a bank robber, but I really viewed it as a real human story. Simple. One doesn't. That's it. <laughs> one. This one doesn't. <laughs> This one gets on the cat suit, okay, <laughs> and gets all dressed, and you know that really does help me. I know it's funny, but once I get my, uh, once I got that outfit on every day, it was so funny that in the back of my head, um, we have this television program, Mission Impossible. You know, I'm sure it's all over the world, if, and I would do the theme song from Mission Impossible in the back of my head, in the middle of scenes, like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> So that helped me. I mean, the silliest things helped me prepare for this, so you wouldn't want the list. Um, Russell is very uh, thought out. He does his homework, which is wonderful because he's a real technical director. He loves, he knows what he wants to get in the camera. He knows the way it should, should look. And you know, it's funny because Russell came from the early, early, early video years, you know, in England with the Stones and everything. And he experimented during that time. And it just, it, it, it's just marvelous for film now because he knows what it feels like to have a rainy night in Georgia, how important it looks on film to have real rain, real rain, real sweat, real. And he's, but he's very, he's very technical in that he sets up a shot, he knows exactly what it should look like. And it's, if it's even that much off, he'll do it over again. And he'll even fight anybody. And he'll stand there, will be nervous, and say, no, no, one more time. <laughs> so he knew what he wanted to shoot. That's, that makes it very easy for all of us. No, you know, Russell is very cool about something. And I thought it was a marvelous way to handle this picture. Val and I just would rehearse by ourselves sometimes. We'd just play around, you know, with the lines and whatever, you know. And I think we got to know each other that way and it made a lot and, and, we, and I rehearsed with Zach by myself you know a lot and that was great just throwing talking about school or dogs or it was great it's neat and Russell was not there he'd check in with us and he'd leave and it was really a, a great way to handle this film because this film is small it was it was small um, as far as the characters were concerned you know I wanted the relationships to be very real uh, I shot it near my home area. This is Atlanta, and I live, my own hometown is an hour and a half away from here. So there were so many great elements already here for us as gifts, you know, and I just think that um, I got to develop my character from the ground up, and each day I would go in and I'd say, I'd go a little, you know, further with the character. And it was just, they all liked what I was doing, so it, it just worked, what I was doing in my own uh, head with her. I can't call him that. I know it's funny. He was horrible when the camera was on. Horrible. Just horrible. But he is one of the coolest guys. He's, he's as nice as he can be. We had so much fun between takes, just talking about England and things. He's so interesting. He's such an interesting man. And he's a marvelous actor. And, you know, I, he just, he was interesting to talk to. I just loved him. We giggled all the time. He's just the opposite of that. That's why it's so hard when the camera's on and you look at him and say, were you just talking to me about your rabbits and your this and that, you know? So he was great. The funny thing about it, I really came to this film very naked, emotionally, everything. I, I really didn't see her as that powerful. I saw her as very human, very humble. Um, this is a woman who just got out of prison, having been in there for robbery you know, for six years. You know, so I, I really had to dress her up like you would a paper doll. I really had to put some emotions in her. When was the trust factor going to, you know, emerge? There were so many things about building her character. So by the end, you do see this full-blown strength 
and this intellect and this uh, high-tech mind at work. But I never, ever, I never rehearsed to that. I never thought about that until it actually happened on the screen. Not once. I didn't know what was happening because I, I don't, I haven't seen the film. I just did the film, you know. And I never saw Daly, so I didn't see the character. I was hoping she was developing the way that I felt. Because there, there's a lot of me in Karen. I put a lot of, of myself in her because, um, well, the gift of just being able to be Southern again. Southern here in Atlanta. It was great. I, I love to make fun of Southern women because I'm one of them. And I love to exaggerate them because I think they're so interesting to me. Their accents are interesting, how they change them, uh, the ploys they use with people uh, to get what they want. Uh, I, I just think they're amazing creatures to study, and I do, as, as all women are, are, basically. But the South, because I grew up here, I've been very close. I've, I've, I've watched Southern women all my life, from my mother, my grandmother, my women around. Oh, how they can be totally honest and totally full of deception <laughs> to see. You know, and I really like Southern women, whether they be, uh, whether you talk Southern uh, from Georgia or Southern from, you know, in Texas women as well. They're great fun characters to exaggerate. Um, my thoughts about the movie have never changed. I'm very proud of that movie. I'm, I'm sorry that all of the people who have seen Nine and a Half Weeks never saw it in its original form because so much was cut out of it, even the European version. But um, because I think it would have made much more sense to the American public, but they were not ready for it. I think Europeans were far, they were ready for it, and yet you didn't, you were not even able to see it. Um, <clears throat> that's unfortunate. It really, it's unfortunate. But I'm very proud of that movie. I think that movie helped me immensely as an actress. Uh, it was the movie that I think. I became an actress rather than just a, 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 a movie star, you know? That's when I really, I had to really test so many emotional waters and be as high as I could possibly, possibly be, as happy and I was as down as I have ever been in a film. Who knows? Whatever day it is. <laughs> I don't know, you know? I love the surprise of opening up a new script and oh, is it good? Is it great? I have people in my office that read the script sometimes. I'll say, is it good? Am I going to have fun? And they'll go, oh, this is awful. It's awful. <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> and, and I don't, you know, I read them myself. I don't ha really, you know, let anybody read the work. I mean, really, but I, lo I love it when it's exciting. It's great. I mean, I, I, I don't know ever. I'm not really looking for anything. I want it to find me. You know, so if it's a comedy, if it's a comedy. If it's a drama, it's a drama. If it's something completely and totally different, I love that. You know, so. oh, I don't really have a favorite, you know. I don't, but I think that it's a much more difficult one, uh, comedy. It's the hardest thing you can do is make people laugh. You can make people cry. Making people cry is difficult as well, but I mean, it's drama. And you can get there and you can break out in tears and you can have emotional moments. To make people laugh, it's timing. And it's, and it's smart and it's quick and it's, whew, it's you, you have to really be a computer with your physical, your mental, everything has to be there. Quick. It has to be on its toes all the time. And I love that. I love that challenge to make people laugh. <laughs> Very well padded, I, I might add. <laughs> I hope. I don't know. I said, yeah, well, anyway, we won't get into that. Uh, did we you... didn't rehearse. Let's just put it that way. No. I work out every day anyway, so not any more than I usually do. I, you know, I've danced for 15 years. I've dived and done gymnastics, so I'm very physical anyway. I'm an outdoors girl in that way, very much so. So that comes in handy. It just does. I, I love to be physical in film. I love to use it all. You know, your body, your mind, your everything. I like to work it all. So, so it was fun. It was great fun, especially running through the banks with. Uh, Terrence and, and Val. I mean, I felt like we were Mission Impossible. No, I think um, actually, you know, rehearsal really didn't help at all. <laughs> yeah, let the truth be known. Um, you know what really helped me? I mean, it really helped me because we filmed it so early in the film was when he was holding up the convenience store. And when I saw him, and I was off camera, totally off camera, and I looked at him and I said, I get it. 
you're as stupid as a post. You're just dumb as a post. This is what it's all about. So that really, that really awakened something in me. And, and I said, that's it. That's where the relationship's going. You know, I'm the mind here. He's the dumb blonde. That's what he is. So it was great. I'm the guy. He's the dumb blonde. So it was cool. It was great. It, it was wonderful to be able to be feminine and, and be in the male, the male shoes. Feminine from the waist up and from the waist, <laughs> you know, from the waist down, a male, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> God, I almost stuck my foot in my mouth. But anyway, no, I think it's changing, you know. But the problem with it is that's a hard question to answer because um, I think more and more women are developing pieces for themselves because there aren't any roles, really great roles for women in Hollywood. And when there are, how many girls? I mean, what, you got six, seven, eight, ten girls after the same. And it's... It's horrible. It really is horrible. Um, you know, so I think you have to start thinking in your head seriously about we always, we are always in search of a good story or a book. I've developed things myself. You know, I'm developing things myself to do myself or for other women, you know, other men, other women. But, um, you know, Hollywood has just got, not gotten to the point where they really, um, you know, women in box office. That's what it's all about. So I think the I think there'll be better writing for some reason when women start, you know, taking the box office just like men. It will give someone some incentive to really write some good women's roles. Honest stories, human, human stories. I've got one Southern piece that I'm doing because I've always wanted to really play something wonderfully, uh, just a heartfelt piece from the South, real from the South, you know, so that and. Uh, um, a couple of com comedies, one comedy that's wonderful with two guys, and um, oh, I can't even think, you know, you caught me off guard. I've got, you know, so many stories I really want to develop. I think I'd like to do a period piece because I, I haven't done that yet. There's some kind of beautiful story out of the past in another century. I would love to do that, I think. I know that my hair and makeup and wardrobe and my whole team and everybody wants to do that. They're so bored with this. <laughs> So, you know, we, we're trying to find one for them and for nobody else. I'm living all over the world, traveling, meeting people, reality, facing reality, growing up, trying to educate myself. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of that because I never really, you know, I came from that, but I never was a good model and I never considered myself a good model. I was so lucky to make as much money as I did. You know, I made a fortune. I came at a good time and I made a lot of money. And basically I got money out of the day, you know, tons of money so I could live and go be an actress. And I never had to, you know, it made me independently, um, you know, wealthy for myself to be able to live on my own and, and go out to Hollywood and never, I never had to be an, a, a waitress or I never had to, you know, do a job that I really didn't want to do at that time in my life after I modeled. So it made me, it made me indi financially in in independent. 